Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the People's Choice Podcast. And today I have a very special guest. I mean, to talk about a jack of all trades, man. This man right here has literally is doing as much as <laughs> much as that regular, you know, person could balance, man. This guy right here. <laughs> For real, like you've done so much. Got my man Mark Maid over here, man. Welcome to the People's Choice Podcast. This man has a PhD in science engineer, mechanical engineer. You also was co-starred on VH1's Dating Naked. And you also uh, wedding specials. You've been on CBS's Face the Truth. Let's make a deal. You also created some amazing games like Icebreaker, Chosen. I can't wait to get into all of that. And of course, you're also a rapper too on the side, which is crazy. Had over one million streams. Like, I mean, dude, this is this. I just can't wait to get into this and just learn more yeah. about you and everything that goes on. So, Mark, welcome to the People's Choice Podcast. More than likely, not how they like it, but how they need. Keep in mind, nothing in life is really guaranteed. Count M's and fuck B's until my M's start with B's or however long I need. Count M's and fuck B's until my M's start with B's. I'll take however long I need. I don't like what I hear, I don't like what I see. And since it ain't nice, then I guess I shouldn't speak. World say as a man, I should express how I like mama's pass a rope. My castle over and intellect match your status quota. My foreign flavor, something different. Pull your trap a cow. We cower bunga, they cower under those collar flowers. We used to sneak like homeroom for the cinematics. My pen, your pan, we connected beyond bedroom pants. <laughs> you know, it's real when y'all ain't spoke for weeks, months, years, and like when y'all reconnect. It's like you ain't skipped a beat. That's crazy. My boy is charm like a shooting star made you fall in love. These cuddly waddles, I held you close cause you hated hugs. Kisses on the forehead and my lips on your mind. Gave you real when everybody else was lying. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you for having me. Yes, man. The pleasure is all mine. And I always like to start from the beginning with all my interviews. So I always want to ask, you know, like, what was your hometown and what, what's your favorite place about it? Uh, okay, uh, so I was born in Detroit, raised in Atlanta. Uh, favorite thing about Detroit is, whoo, man, uh, when it's warm, it feels good outside. Like, <laughs> like a blistering heat, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, favorite thing about Atlanta, people are down to earth. They're very social. They like to communicate. Um, you know how, like, normally in the South or whatever, uh, mm-hmm. if you're in, like, down, down South, whether it's Miami or Whatever, you know what I'm saying? South yeah. Florida, and for instance, uh, people have a certain judgment, you know what I'm saying, about mm-hmm. you. If you don't have a certain look, they treat you a certain way. Whereas in Atlanta, they still got their own preferences, but everybody would at least talk to you. Mm-hmm. Um, so for the people out there that's ugly, you got a chance in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? You might not <laughs> get where you're going, but at least they'll let you know. Yeah. instead of just being rude or whatever. So I like the communication aspect of um, of Atlanta. But yeah, man, that's born and raised. Born and raised, shout out, man, that's awesome. So I want to ask, like, so where where did all this this start in your journey as far as PhD? Let's talk about that, because I don't think I ever had a guest, at least not to my knowledge, of all the 80-some yeah. episodes that, that had a PhD in mechanical engineering and, you know, really – diving in on that field and then branched off the other. So let's, let's start there. Yeah. So, uh, I got my, uh, mechanical engineering undergraduate degree at, uh, Kennesaw state university in Georgia. Ooh, and shout then, out. And, um, I was able to, uh, fortunately get a, um, a fellowship, a, a STEM fellowship. So STEM science, technology, engineering, mathematics, a fellowship, like they pay for your tuition and, Basically, you're able to go to grad school for free and they pay you a stipend. So uh, I got that at Florida International University in Miami, Florida. And that's where I got my master's and PhD in mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was there from, I got my, I graduated high school in 09, finished in 2013 uh, with my undergrad and then started 2014, fall 2014 in a, uh, in Florida International University and then finished up with my PhD in 2020. So Congratulations. Spring. Yeah, appreciate you. <laughs> what, what, what was that process like getting getting your PhD in 2020 and the, the height of COVID, you know, with everything Man, going on? If I'm being honest with you, bro, I literally finished my dissertation, uh, my presentation at least, my defense, March 6th. So it was like a week before we went to quarantine. So it was all regular for me. 
Gotcha. Um, I didn't get no easy way out or had people have to Zoom call in or nothing like that. Mine was like all the teachers was present. I had to do it in person, all that stuff. Um, and I did my dissertation and everything, submitted that during uh, obviously the quarantine. But by then, you know, once you pass your defense, the dissertation is pretty much already written up. So you just kind of submitting and tweaking and stuff. So it was it was regular for me. It wasn't nothing crazy. That's good because, yeah, I was wondering. I was like, Lisa, 2020, and I was in my research. I was like, oh, man, I wonder if that was like, during the pandemic time, but it's cool. You, yeah. you got it right before things got right before, crazy. Like a week before. Yeah, man, I can't even imagine going through that. Like if, you know, you had to go through that, you know, with the pandemic and stuff, because luckily I wasn't in school or anything like that. So I don't know how that affected, you know? Yeah. Well, for me, it was, um. so I ended up getting a, a job right out of uh, getting my PhD. So I ended up moving to Boston. Uh, to work mm-hmm. as a scientist, which is what I do now. Mm-hmm. But I ended up getting a uh, job in Boston and moving there at the end of March. Mm-hmm. So Boston was like a hub for COVID and everything. So everything yeah. shut down up there. But and it's like way stricter up in the, the Northeast versus down mm-hmm. in the South. But um, yeah, man, it was like in the pandemic was doing all of that at the same time. You know, and then from there, I ended up moving, you know, down south and now live in Orlando. So it's yeah. worked out. And it worked all for you. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah. So I want to ask what what love came first? Like was it your like being you know in science or was it music or you know wanting to get people together from like your games that you've created? Mm-hmm. Like like what what love came first? Uh I would have to say it's the love of creation, man. Uh it wasn't necessarily uh, social things. Uh, it was just creating things. So since I was young, I always wanted to create like prototypes. I always made little prototypes, combining toys and stuff and using tape and having Nerf guns with like scopes from wherever, whatever toys and all that stuff. So it's always been like a creation thing. From there, I ended up getting into energy. Um, so creation first and then energy second, because I just like I don't know, I got an infatuation with energy, whether that's energy between people, energy in an individual person, or just how, like, energy around the world, you know what I'm saying, how things are connected, uh, how things transfer energy, um, whether that's from an aspect of food and nutrition, or from, like, solar power from the sun, or wind power, or water, you know, hydropower and stuff, so just overall energy, and um, I guess... With those two leading, you know what I'm saying, creation and energy, I kind of got into creating things that provided realms where people can explore those energies. And of course, you know, that leads to the first thing I, I became, or not became, the first thing I started creating was choosing. So choosing was the first thing. Uh, that was a card game. Mm-hmm. And as a way of promoting that, I ended up rapping because I always knew how to like freestyle. You know, mm-hmm. my freestyle is trash now, but like back <laughs> when I do, before I would even write anything, like I would be able to freestyle and all that stuff. So I thought it'd be cool to promote choosing by rapping. And then from that, I grew into Mark Made. And from Mark Made and choosing, I ended up creating Icebreaker. So mm-hmm. that's the, the full, you know what I'm saying, start to finish of how everything ended up happening. Definitely. And it's, it's so amazing to see, like I was on your um your Instagram and stuff and seeing how popular Icebreaker was and or oh, still is, I should say what well, still is, you know, making guest appearances. I've seen you on, you know, shows and everything and talking about it. Let's let's talk about the origin of Icebreaker. How did it all begin and what made you come up with the game? Got you. So, uh, like I said, it started off with choosing. Choosing is a card game that essentially gives you tasks. And it's almost like Ring of Fire, but it gives you tasks mm-hmm. and dares, and you have to either perform them as you see fit or what you can get away with, or you skip and drink. But the cool thing about choosing is I also included things like uh, little quick games that were inside of it to kind of break the ice with people. And you see where this is going. So <laughs> even though choosing is a more of a kinky game, it's more of a private game that you do at house parties or, you know what I'm saying, behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. I noticed that I wanted something that you can reach people no matter who, strangers or whatever, on the outside. I wanted something that you could play publicly. So um, how Icebreaker originally started was like an extension, expansion pack for choosing, which was like 
I created an AR game, so an augmented reality game of icebreaker that would go along with choosing. It was just the little quick games. But then from that, I was like, all right, I think I want to turn icebreaker into something real. So uh, I had the idea of making a board game out of it. And mm -hmm. from that, I just kind of imported some of the, uh, the quick games that I was creating for uh, icebreaker, the AR game into the board game. And then I added more games to kind of fit the, the board. And, you know, I wanted to give people something that was of value because at the time the AR game was only like maybe like 15 to 20 games, mm -hmm. but the final icebreaker board game is 45 games. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to give people new things. I wanted to give people creative thing, creative things. And I also wanted to just with the whole idea of keeping people socializing and having a good time in a fast and meaningful way. Definitely. Does that come from like, was you a very social person? Like, in, let's say like in college or like high school? Oh, yes. and, and, <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, I, was, I was wondering that because I was yeah. like, you know, did that come from that or did it also come from because like we saw a little bit about the pandemic, how it seemed more people are now are introverted mm -hmm. every since, you know, and yes. it's harder for people to put themselves out there no matter if, you know, if they're getting to know somebody in a party or even putting their business out there. So I was, I was yeah, curious on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So definitely a social person. Uh, I've gone to a lot of parties. Um, you know what I'm saying? Everything is about part of your value is your, your network, yeah. you know, and um, I just like meeting people on top of that. You know, I like to to figure out new things, open up new conversations, um, just to really engage because you don't really know who someone is until you you talk with them. You know what I'm saying? So I've gone to a lot of parties. Obviously, I do a lot of different things. So a part of doing a lot of different things, you got to have people in different places and you're going to meet people in different places, whether that be physically, figuratively, whatever, you know. So uh, because of all those different domains that I'm in, I kind of have to be social, you know, because just to explain it to people. They may not understand how a scientist is also a rapper who's also a game creator, who's also a basketball player, whatever it may be. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you got to be able to to kind of talk the walk, you know, to explain it. <laughs> so yeah. just that alone is, uh, yeah, definitely a super social person. Yeah, man. Like I, I was um, I only I will normally only tell my mom, like, who I'm interviewing before it's even out there, just you know like superstition or whatever and i was explaining you know her to you and she was like how the hell does he manage to do all that yeah. <laughs> and i said i'll ask him on the podcast so like <laughs> how, how do you how do you manage that like how do you keep you know you got these multiple businesses that you're doing you got your job plus you have to have a social life and everything yeah. like how do you how do you uh, manage all that or is that still uh, a challenge if i'm being real with you man it's not really that complicated uh i feel like a lot of people procrastinate you know what i'm saying they do things that don't necessarily fit their lifestyle they kind of just do things because they're kind of lazy at the end of the day you know what i'm saying like they know they should probably be learning this trade or learning how to do this or doing these chores or whatever and they just choose not to difference with me is well i'm like all right I like doing these things, you know what I'm saying? I like making the music. I'm already a social person. I'm always thinking of new games, new business ideas, new marketing, whatever it may be. So it's like, I'm the type of person I like to apply my ideas. I don't like to just sit on stuff. So that's that's engaging with me, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's, it's playing basketball and trying to moves out or whether it's music and trying to find a beat, make a beat, uh, write lyrics, whatever it may be. It's just, I like to actually apply these things. And like I said, one of my first things that I'm involved with is I like to create. So part of creating is not stopping at the idea stage and just keeping it so that you can forget it, but it's also making it practical. And I don't know, for me, I just, I do those things. Like if you, if you think about how often you just sit around and just chill, you know what I'm saying? If you think about how often someone does that, whether that's, they just sit around and smoke, sit around, drink, sit around on the phone and just do nothing but scroll, play video games. And now nah, I play video games, don't get me wrong. But it's like, <laughs> I'm also like, I have music playing, I'm reciting my lyrics while I'm playing. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm also like thinking of ideas or writing down lyrics or coming up with new games for Icebreaker or something. Like Thanks, I'm doing all these things, I'm, I'm, I'm mixing things because it's like, it's not that complicated to do one thing nowadays. 
Mm-hmm. And then it's just building a habit around that. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course, from the outside in, if you don't make music, if you don't do podcasts, if you don't, I don't know, uh, make board games or whatever, or do science work, you're going to hear that and just be like, oh my gosh, that sounds like a lot. But if you're someone who has been applying yourself for an extended period of time, you figured out different ways of either automating these things or fusing these things in the sense of you're doing it at the same time as other things. So it's like, if you consider, oh, how is someone doing all of this and I'm doing 10 things, or if you consider that person versus someone who's doing three things at once because an idea is just an idea. You can think about ideas wherever you at. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have facts. to be just sitting there in a room thinking of ideas. You can be doing something else that you like to do while you're thinking. And that's the type of person I am. So it just, it makes it makes sense. Since I'm always able to think, I'm always able to figure out solutions and making things easier. So while I'm playing the video games, while I'm hooping, I'm able to actually, okay, I can do it like this, or I can say it like this. And then by the time I actually get to doing it, it's already minimized, you know? So it's, that's the only thing I can say. The time management is on fleet. <laughs> that's, 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 that's what's up. That's what's up, man. So where the name Mark May came from? I, I already like that. Like, that is just such a cool, like, name to just go by. I'm like, Mark May. Like, yeah, I could just say, yeah, like, where I, I was. That, <laughs> yeah, like, I was, I was, I remember I was in the car when um, I was talking to um, LF3. Shout out to you, brother. And um, when he was telling me about you, I was like, damn, that's a cool ass name. Mark May. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so where, where, where did that name come from? Uh, Mark May came from, well, my name is uh, Marcus. So that's my full name. Uh, pretty much everybody calls me Mark. And uh, originally, I wanted my artist name to be just Mark, M-A-R-C. And um, there's this, like, DJ in, in Norway or something. <laughs> and, and, you know, like, when you're back in the day when you had to make your name in Spotify, now you can, you can have the same name as somebody. You know mm. what I'm saying? But, like, back a few years ago, 2016, 2015, it can only mm. be one person with that name. Yep. And, like... There was a dude named Mark White DJ in Norway, and his name, well, he had two profiles. He had DJ Mark, which was where pretty much all his following was in music. But I guess he also decided to rap on some of his beats and stuff. So he just went by Mark. So he had both of them. And I was like, dang, man. So I I can't get Mark. And then I was like, all right, well, what do I do? I make stuff. So because I make stuff, Mark made. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that. That's good, man. That's good. So let's talk about your music career because I've had tons of mu- musicians from rappers to rockers, country people, all over. Uh, I try to keep a wide variety of um, guests in my uh, podcast. And uh, I know you said you you know you freestyle, you know, and then you know create songs and stuff. And seeing that you had, you know, over a million streams, like, I'm like, I know people that would just kill for that, that literally that <laughs> music is, that's their oh, wow. one thing, you know, where it's like, so I wanted to ask you, like, when did you decide to dive into your music career? Oh, man, shout out Apartment 5 and my boy El Kendrell, man. Uh, one day, uh, so El Kendrell, uh, I got a couple songs with him, but um, he was, this was all in grad school, so he was, um, he, he used to hear, he heard that from somebody that I could, I could freestyle. So one day um, he just put on some beats and um, was like, hey man, hit that beat. So I started rapping, you know what I'm saying? I just started going. And then he would just keep switching the beats out, I'd keep rapping. We ended up doing that for like an hour. And I was like, hey bro, man, where you getting all these beats from? You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't ever heard no, no artist playing these or nothing, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he was from uh, Baton Rouge, so he had a certain bop to his beats. And um, he was like, oh, man, I made all these. And I was like, oh, snap. I was like, dang, bro, you, I wouldn't be surprised if you got on some of these beats because he could, he, could, he could flow too. And um, he was like, man, believe it or not, bro, I actually got the software to record stuff. So with him, I started recording. And that was like, man, that was 20, 20, end of 2016. That was fall 2016. And um you know, me and him ended up forming a group with my boy 150 named uh, Apartment 5. And we did that from basically 2017 to like 2018, just making songs. We was making it 
with borderline nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know, the ear pods that come in with your phone. Like, uh -huh. you know, yeah, those thing. Yeah. <laughs> we had those. Uh, I had a Samsung at the time. So it was like the, the, the ear pods for the Samsung, and you can connect it to the computer. And we was recording using those. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> using, uh, using Logic Pro X and uh, some Samsung headset type stuff. Uh, so you already know our stuff wasn't the best quality. <laughs> Hey, we, all, we, we all start from somewhere. <laughs> yeah, man, but we was able to record. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We was able to record. We was able to learn, you know what I'm saying, the, the ropes of the, the DAW softwares. And um, from there, man, uh, I ended up becoming Mark May in 2018. So I went solo in 2018 because um, I just wanted, I don't know, I had, you know, we all had our own uh, ideas for songs and stuff and, like, I was still with Apartment 5, but I also wanted to like, I didn't want to be so dependent on producers. Yeah. And they was my only two producers. And I was like, damn, man, I need to reach out and do this. Like, it was, everything we was doing was on my boy El Kendrell's computer. And I was like, man, I need to, I need to get stuff on my computer so I can mess with it in my free time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So uh, in 2018, I ended up making my first song, which was PUBG. And uh, I just went on from there, man. Definitely, definitely. What was what was the reaction to like your family and uh, close friends that known you, you know, and knowing you for doing, you know, what you're doing before, but then it's like, you know, I'm gonna dive into rap too. How they yeah, take that? Uh, uh, funny enough, I mean, a lot of people they were telling me to get into rap because I used to, like I said, I used to do a freestyle for like 30 minutes straight, bro. Like Woo. no mess ups. You know, my favorite rapper in the day used to be Cassidy. So, like, he would oh, have... Oh, man, Cassidy. Yeah, man. like, he yeah. would have these 11-minute freestyle, 7-minute freestyle, 20-minute freestyle, hour long. And I'm like, <laughs> dang, like, this is what rappers... Like, this is what I got to be able to do if I wanted to rap. You know what I'm saying? So, me and my brother, we would always just freestyle and stuff. And we would freestyle, like, you know, in, in, in Atlanta, everywhere is at least 30 minutes away. So, we would freestyle from the time we get into the car to the time we park. And it's like, that would be a 30 minute, 45 minute drive sometimes. And like, learn, doing that throughout the years, you know, I just kind of learned to freestyle. Um, and then while at uh, Florida International University, I ended up meeting my boy Bang. Um, and uh, he's one of my producers and stuff. And he, uh, he was like, hey man, you like, you can, you can really flow. Like, you should maybe think about chilling on that freestyle stuff and start writing your stuff down. Mm -hmm. And by this point in time, I was already like kind of recording, but I wasn't recording as frequently as I do now. Mm -hmm. And that's in part because when I freestyle, I'm not freestyling bars or stuff that I, I wrote. I'm freestyling straight off the top. So I'm coming up with these clever lines. And then in my head, I don't like to reuse lines. So mm -hmm. in my head, because I said it, I'm like, oh, I already said that somewhere. I can't use this. And that's taken away from the content of me actually making songs. So he was like, hey, man, chill out on that freestyling. You know, find producers, get beats, but write your stuff down. And if you freestyle somewhere, you freestyle. But, like, don't don't just freestyle. So when I made that, that conversion over to more of a writer, um, it just started, you know what I'm saying? The song started coming out more and then people was just, you know, telling me to keep going. Like it wasn't nobody that was like kind of shocked because everyone knew I used to just freestyle whenever against whoever. So it was almost like an encouragement. Thanks, man. And that's awesome that, that, you know, you have that support system and man, yeah. just freestyling for 30, 40, man, that's hours. <laughs> <to> you. <laughs> oh man, I can't even... Imagine what you saying, Cassidy, because I, I grew up, up up north and Cassidy was huge, you know, up north. And then, you know, I'm in North Carolina now, so a lot of people don't know too much besides his battle raps. But like, yeah. man, Cassidy is so underrated. And I used to listen to still to this day, actually. I just listened not that long ago. That one uh cipher he did when they were like, hmm, you know, say oh, yeah. that one. Uh, yeah. Is that the looking uh, that's not the looking at uh looking boy? What was it? No, nah, not looking, boy. It was like, mm -hmm. and yeah, he's like, he's yeah, like, yeah. Uh, 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 you know, yeah, like that. I can't remember the name of that, uh, what that was called, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, man. So when you brought Cassie, I was like, yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. What, what's some current projects that you're currently working on for all my, I'll call my fans, my peeps. So for all my peeps and new audience and your fan base to uh, get ready for. 
Okay. Uh, so before now, um, uh, I had my Mondays projects. Mm-hmm. So I had Mondays one, Mondays two is like a collection of singles. I was listening to Monday too on the way, uh, on the car yeah. on the way. Yeah. Yeah. I, it was just a collection of singles. There was no theme or nothing. You know what I'm saying? It was just a collection of singles that I want to show people I can just make good songs. You know what I'm saying? Just quick two minute, 30, three minute, 30 second songs that are just like little bops and stuff. Uh, so this new project is kind of my first time making a themed album. Um, so speaking of LF3, he's actually engineering the stuff as we speak. Uh, this new project is called Made. Uh, it is from the standpoint of I'm kind of angry with the the pers- it's, it's from a from a, a feeling of anger about how maybe people perceive me when it comes to music. How I may get snubbed on this, or I can I can tell there's tension with something, or there's some hatred, or there's some envy, you know. And I can just tell the way people move. You ever heard that term, that phrase of people be like, oh man, let, let's work. You know what I'm saying? And then they never come through. Ne- like, never. Or, yeah. <laughs> I get that on the podcast all the time. Exactly. You know They're what like, I'm saying? Yo, I gotta like, be on your show, man. They're like, it, all right, let's set a time date. And I never hear nothing. It, <laughs> then they don't show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No call, no show type stuff. And I'm the type, if you say like, let's do something, I'm gonna actually hit you up. Mm. And I'm not the type to wait no month. Like, if we're talking about it right here, if it's 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m. in the day or whatever, and we say let's work, I might actually have it ready by 9 p.m. So if you were serious, then today we're working. You know what I'm saying? Or well, I might hit you up the next day or two days from then. But it's never like past two days. So if you say let's work, I'm expecting, oh, we're getting right to it. So it's a lot of people out there that'll be like, oh, yeah, dude, 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 send me the song. I send it to them. All right, this junk cool. And then nothing, yeah, you know, and I'm like, okay, I'm also the type I've written songs in 15 minutes. I've written songs in a, in a few weeks, you know, so I can write, normally I'm around a couple hours to write a song. So it's like, if I send you a joint and you say it's tight and you take a month to get back to me, or maybe uh, two weeks, three weeks or two months to just tell me, ah, oh, man, I wasn't able to do it. Bro, I'm already moved. Like, the song right. is already good now. You know what I'm saying? I'm right, already done. Right. So, um, and, but see, all in all, that has made me into kind of this, this super villain, if you will. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, not that, that angers me. Like, I may not lash out on this person. I'll be like, hey, man, it's all good. It is whatever. But that still make you feel a type of way. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's and, like they don't take you serious, you know, in exactly. a way. Like, respect and your like, profession. Yeah, I feel you. And see, that's where, the, that's where the Detroit in me comes out. Because, no, you're not taking me serious. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to show you. I'm going to treat you like how you how you want to be treated in my head. You know what I'm saying? So it's like now you're going to get that that angry side of me. Like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to like, so I'll just give you the rundown. So the first song is about sooner or later. I'm basically saying like sooner or later, y'all going to. Y'all gonna hop on the ship, you know what I'm saying? And <laughs> got another song like "Good to Go," regardless that, if it's with you. I'm sorry, to cut you off. That's that's good. that's so funny. You said that sooner, sooner or later, because I literally say that all the time. I'm like, you know what? Sooner or later, y'all gonna catch up eventually. Once exactly. This, become, this wants to become a big podcast. Y'all, y'all gonna, you know. <laughs> exactly. You know, sooner or later, y'all gonna be hopping on. You know what I'm saying? Whether or not you do or not, I'm gonna be good. So the second song is "Good to Go." You see what I'm saying? The third song, Rotation, that's one of the songs that it's been posted in other, you know what I'm saying, platforms, but I ain't really been posting on mine yet because I want to make sure I, I drop it correctly. Mm-hmm. You know, but um, the song, obviously, Rotation, things coming in rotation, mm-hmm. money, people, whatever. Uh, I got another song called A Whole Lot of Cash. My boy Big Benny shot him. You can hear what that's about. Whole lot of cash. You know what I'm saying? It's, <laughs> some, it's, rotation. it's, it's some other tracks. I don't go through all of them, but it's some other ones that's just basically saying, like, you see the progress in these things. And I'm the type of person, if you see where the progress is, you see this person putting in all this work. You ain't got to force them. You ain't got to convince them that they believe in themselves. You ain't got a nothing. If you got skills and you see this person putting in work, I'm the type of person to go over and try to help this person, be a part of this person's network, be a part of this person's team. You got a lot of people who see this 
Someone doing, putting in this work, you see the results because they're being transparent and you still sit back. Scrolling through. And just scroll no. past it and that shit ain't dope. Man. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like you know how hard it is, bro? Like, let, let me keep it. You know how hard it is to find someone who's serious about their craft. You know what I'm saying? To find someone who invests in their craft. And not just that. You also don't have to convince them to believe in themselves. It's a lot of people out here that quiet quit. You know what I'm saying? They'll, they'll quit. They'll go ghost for a certain amount of time without telling nobody. And then you just sitting there waiting. You are inconvenient. You got people praying for you. And they over here wasting their prayers because you ain't putting in the work that they think that you putting in. That they hear you saying in your song, putting in the work. We got this going for <laughs> And all of a sudden, you depressed. And you, you, you go ghost for a year. And it's like, I thought everything was, you know what I'm saying? I thought you yeah. had the girls. I thought you had the money and the, the jewels and you didn't have to chase and labels was hitting you up. How how all of a sudden you need these breaks? So it's like when mm-hmm. you see that in a person, that person being me, I'm working at my stuff, I'm investing in myself, I, I got the confidence. You see that and you don't try to assist that with whatever skill set you have. I understand if you fail, you know what I'm saying? I understand that. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like you need a team. I'm constantly looking for a team. You've been complaining that the people you're working with ain't serious, and mm-hmm. you see me in front of you. You see facts, what I'm saying? That, that, that angers me. You know what I'm saying? That it makes me feel a type of way. So that's what I wanted to put into Made. Of mm-hmm. course, it's a play on my own name because it's Mark Made. So it's me giving you what I've made, but also it's like, nigga, I'm going to be made regardless. I'm going to be set regardless. Regardless, yeah. <laughs> you, like, I'm going to be good regardless, no matter what, man. I, you know, it's so crazy. Good. Like, I can relate so much to that song already. I haven't even heard it yet. Like, I can't wait. When can all my peeps and you audience expect that uh, single to come out? Man, so uh, I'm going to have two singles. One's going to be Rotation. The other one's going to be A Whole Lot of Cash. Um, I'm still kind of deciding on which one I'm going to come out with first, but I might come out with Rotation first since I already got that one finished. Um, That's probably going to come out in a month or so. Within within a month, you know what I'm saying? A month or so, and then A Whole Lot of Cash will probably come out in maybe five weeks, four to five weeks after that. And then I'll be looking to probably drop the album sometime August, September. So then I can let it do its own thing, you know, and then just giving it enough time so then it can it can build a fan base, build, you know, what I'm saying clientele, build listeners and all that. So over from July, August, September, you can expect everything to be dropped. That sounds sounds exciting, man. I cannot wait. All my peeps that you're hearing this, make sure y'all mark your calendars now. Definitely, yeah, definitely. And <laughs> May don't go crazy. I can't. I can't crazy. wait for that one for real. For real. Like, I mean, I can't wait for all of it. And you got the support from me and the People's Choice podcast. We definitely support as that. much as we can. But yeah, that made when I'm in, and I go through that daily. Like you know, like so it's like it was so relatable hearing. Like well, yeah, I'm not the only one going through shit like this. You right. know, like frustrating, dog. Frust- like on a cellular level, it's like yo. It, <laughs> And I think it's more frustrating because it happens so frequently. It doesn't matter how, like, I was watching um, uh, the Chris Brown Big Boy uh, podcast or something like that. And, you know, okay. Big Boy has his whole, his whole like, radio station. And oh, all yeah. That. Even Chris Brown was saying, to this day, it still happens to him. Mm. And I was like, bro, could you imagine being at the level of Heaven. Chris Brown? Or the highest people, level. And people still, like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna get back to you, and then like five months go by, you waiting on this verse for somebody, or you, you know what I'm saying? You thinking something cool, something sweet, and it's not, and it's like, bro, it's still happening to him, and it's like I feel this animosity from these people, and I've hit up hundreds, bro, like hundreds of people oh, yeah. actually spoke to them. I ain't talking about I'm just sending this random person a song, mm-hmm. and they don't know it's coming. I've spoken to this person directly, straight up. Hey, let's do this. All right, we're going to do it. Send it to me. And they don't get back. Or they send something back that's like, yeah, this is just a reference. And then they never finish or something. And it's just like, bruh, y'all, y'all don't know. That makes an artist feel a type of way. You know what it I'm saying? really do. You feel, 
you can really feel discouraged. Like you got to have a certain level of like, I want this I hunger in order to complete things nowadays. Because there's so many people that just like, they waste your time. And that can be mm-hmm. overwhelming for somebody that's not as confident. And yeah. it's like, even if I'm still confident, it still affects me. Because I'm like, bro, I'm over here trying to get you on, on my track. I'm trying to work with you. Like, I didn't have to reach out to you. We just happened to talk, connect. <laughs> I thought we connected to the point where I'm like, all right, let's let's do something. Let's make something. Thanks. <laughs> so, Thanks. So, you were you were preaching to the choir right here, man. I swear, Damn, man. Dog. I, 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 cause I, I have like what eighty something, over eighty something that's published. Still got some in the vault. So mm-hmm. I've talked to hundreds of people and had them in in like zooms like this, and we're gonna schedule this or, you know, get all this laid out, and then nothing after a while. Or oh yeah yeah something came up or, like it's just and it do make you feel discouraged a little bit. Even though like I'm pretty confident in myself and my ability, especially now I've been getting so much better as a podcaster and editor. But early on, like it was so discouraging, man. It was like man, like I even took a break a couple times. Yeah, nothing too crazy, nothing too long. But it was like man, like just to get my bearings together. Because plus I'm I am my own team of one man being here, so it's like. Yeah. You know, going through all taking all that time to, you know, set up the meetings and time zone thing. Cause some people were, you know, far, far away. Some were globally or some in different states. So we could put in all this work just for nothing to happen. And it's like, I give up. Yeah. <laughs> at least or down, on man. you, at least. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Not like in general, but yeah. with you, I'm moving on. I'm going, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Honestly. man. It's a letdown, bro. So I, whew, man, I might, talk on that for a while, bro. So that, that might be that might be a song in the future we can call a letdown. <laughs> I'll jump on the track with you. I got experience in rapping, but I, I can use my experience. You can clean it up. Yeah. In parentheses, let's work. It's like, bro, right. man, yo. Man, people, man, I swear. But I'm glad you never let that really, you know, dim your light too much and kept you keep moving forward and just, you know, you're gonna catch you're gonna catch up one day. And you know, we're we all that are on the train, we still trying to keep up with you, man. So imagine the ones that's behind. So it's it's gonna be, you know, um, you're lost. Facts. <laughs> facts. Oh, let's uh let's talk a little bit about like the shows that you made some appearances on that I was just curious to ask like what was that experience like in the process so first one is dating naked because <laughs> yeah. you know a lot of people hear you know that or if they even see it they're like mm, that's interesting so what, what was <laughs> the the process of that and and just yeah. everything how was that like for you so uh, that was when I was graduating from uh, Kennesaw State University so how I even got into that. So um, I started off modeling in Atlanta, just, you know, regular modeling. I was able to model for the BET award show, like back in like 2011 or 2012. Yeah, congrats so, like, on that. They, That's they pretty cool. Red carpet shows. Um, and it was cool. Uh, and doing that, I ended up meeting someone at, um, there's an art institute. There's a art institute of Atlanta and SCAD also in Atlanta and, um, there was the High Museum in Atlanta. And somebody who, I guess, came to one of the shows uh, where I was modeling at had a connection there. And they were trying to get me to model for one of those uh, art classes where you're naked and the, the class is painting, you know what I'm saying? Painting you in the center and like they're they're, they're making you on a canvas and stuff. And I didn't want to do it, you know what I'm saying? I don't, <laughs> I'm like, bro. That's got to be awkward as hell. You yeah, just, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> meet like, all, like, just hanging out. Just, are y'all finished facts. hanging? They're like, stay, stay still. Oh, okay. Thanks, <laughs> bro. So I'm over here like, man, I ain't about to do that. And like, it's by this point in time, it's like 2013. And I'm like, man, I ain't about to, I'm about to graduate my engineering degree and stuff. Like, I need to look for a job and stuff. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to be, back then you would get blackballed from like working certain jobs and stuff if you were a model and especially you know i'm already black so black 2013 just getting my degree you can't have nothing wrong with your profile for them to accept it yeah i'll be squeaky clean man (laughs) and um uh like it was to the point where like you can't even have logos on your shirts back Mm. then you know what i'm saying they'll be like oh you're you're representing another brand you you know what i'm saying but if (laughs) I ain't going to go into that. But basically, <laughs> it, it was to that level. And um, when I I declined doing the, 
the art thing. And, you know, I was telling some people about it, telling some girls and stuff, and they was like, yo, like, you got a body. You know what I'm saying? You should, you should do it. And then I told them how much I was going to make, which was $200 an hour for four hours. Mm-hmm. And they was like, $200 an hour? What? You should have did that. You know what I'm saying? So here I am. They, you know, they gassed me up a little bit. So I was like, you know what? Next time I have the opportunity of doing something like that, I'm going to highly consider it. So what ends up happening is I received this um, this message. That was back then when there was something called Model Mayhem. It was almost like a casting network, but strictly for models and things. Mm-hmm. And um, there was this, this, oh, go to a tropical island and go on a blind date. We'll pay you and all this stuff. The only gimmick is you'll be naked. And I was like, <laughs> okay, they talking about major network, you know what I'm saying? I just had this conversation like probably a few hours before. And um, I was like, you know what? That might be a sign. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to apply. I was, I, was, I was just going to say, isn't it amazing how God can just throw signs at you, man? <laughs> random, you know what I'm saying? Random yeah. signs that you just got to be able to connect them. Mm. And I was like, all right, I'm going I'm to apply. I applied. And uh, I ended up receiving this call. I can't remember her name, but I received this call from a woman who was acting like a fat woman. And you wonder, how do you, how does someone act like a fat woman? Well, she was, she just randomly called and was like saying, oh, I'm the, a, a casting for this other, this other thing. And I ain't, like, I used to apply for so many things. I didn't remember, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh. Okay, and she's like, yeah, so just tell me about you. And then while she's telling, while I'm telling her about me, uh, she keeps mentioning, throwing these little, these little uh, statements out like, oh, I'd never be able to get that. And oh, man, if I wasn't looking like this, and if I wasn't overweight, and if I wasn't ugly, I'd be able to have this. And then I like, after she did that, like maybe three times, I was like, hey, yo, like, why you keep saying that about yourself? You know what I'm saying? So that led to me just talking to her for like two hours. Mind you, never met her or anything. We just ran a phone call. And uh, after that two hours, she was just like, you know, Mark, thank you for this. Like, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, I'll get back to you on that on that casting. I didn't completely forgot about the casting by this point in time because I'm <laughs> over here trying to give her life lessons. You feel me? So yeah. uh, she, she ends up calling me back like two days later. It was like, hey, Marcus, uh, I apologize. My name isn't this, this, and this. I'm not this person and all that. Sends me a photo of how she really looks. And she was like this model looking, mm-hmm. woman, you know what I'm saying? And it was like, but you catfish me. <laughs> yeah, in fact, I was like, oh, I'm over here giving you all this game and stuff. And, you know, trying to help you out in your life. You don't even look like this. And she was like, yeah, I apologize on that. But um, I actually am a producer for MTV. And I told VH1 about you after our conversation. And I was like, oh, what is that for? She was like, well, I found your information from this, this casting thing and about dating naked. And after our conversation, they thought you would be perfect as a dater. So I was like, oh, OK, well, you know what I'm saying? Here's my email. If you think it's, you know what I'm saying, if you think it's good or whatever, like, I, I consider it. Well, it was, she was dead serious. You know what I'm saying? I, over the next week. I spoke with all the producers, ended up getting flown out to L.A. to have the in-person auditions and stuff. Um, Cool thing was, at least from what I was told, uh, I was the first dater selected because they just liked my personality off rip. Awesome. Yeah, man. That's how I got on Dating Naked. (laughs) (laughs) That is awesome. You still close with any any of the uh, cast or uh, any of the producers or anything to this day? Uh, well, unfortunately, the producer who had the final say, uh, he passed away a few years ago. So, oh uh, man, I'm sorry to hear uh, that. Man. But some of the contestants, some of them still follow me on Instagram. Uh, I, I go into my Facebook like once every <laughs> two months, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and I'll see a post from some of the, uh, some of the other contestants that I was on the shows with. Um, but yeah. I, we're all still cool. We all still know each other, but like we ain't reaching out and talking and all that stuff. Gotcha. It's just we see each other. We might like a photo, make comment or something, and that's it. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And another one that's a real popular show, especially like for my family, is let's make a deal. So I wanted Man. to ask you about that, and you know the whole process with that, and what was the experience like? 
Uh, so how I got apart, let's make a deal. Uh, my girlfriend, Sydney Gray, she, um, she was on like casting networks and she, um, uh, she, she always wanted to be on a game show. Uh, she's actually on a game show. Bullshit. So it's called Bullshit on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, she was like, oh, snap, it's like, let's make a deal. You know what I'm saying? You should, you should do this. Cause she just looks at game shows and stuff. Mm -hmm. And she, um, she sent me kind of the invitation to apply and, you know, I, all right, well, I ain't got nothing to lose. You know what I'm saying? Applied, ended up filling out the, the application had to send in the video and, um, uh, how, what, what kind of won them over for me was, um, you know, I'm telling them who I am. I'm like, oh, I'm a rapper and, uh, I'm a scientist and it's like, I guess nowadays in 2022, 2023, that's kind of like, oh, you're just a, another black dude that does multiple things. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Then <laughs> when I mentioned that like they wasn't really phased at all. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and then when I mentioned I made a board game, that's when they were like, oh, oh, up now you're a rapper and a scientist and a board game maker. Okay. Now you got my attention, you know? So uh, once I told him about the board game, everything about music and science kind of just went out the window. And it was, <laughs> all, it was all about the board game, which I'm happy about, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because they, they gave me the opportunity to put it on their platform, yeah. uh, which you don't really see no shameless plugs like that of a company saying, oh, put your brand in front of millions of people, you know, so that <laughs> big was, facts. <laughs> yeah. So that was that was real dope. Like I didn't have to sign no, hey, you get percentages and all that. They just did a shameless plug. And uh, it was cool, man. They liked the energy. Uh, they, they thought the icebreaker game was dope. Um, shout out to Sydney even telling me to even do it. And uh, yeah, man, it just worked out. Awesome. And that is a dope game too. Like I, I really was well, looking it up and my cousin actually has the game and he was like, what? You're interviewing the guy who made this? This is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, it was he, the way he did it was even funnier, but I have to do that off camera. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing that, but uh, it was just amazing, man. And uh, I wanted to ask you, like, um, how, how'd you feel when you saw like Icebreaker was really like taking off, or even your music career? Like, what was that like moment like for you when you're seeing like, man, it's getting traction, this is doing really well? Yeah. It's definitely a good feeling, man. It's uh, it just re reestablishes, you know, what I'm saying reestablishes thought processes that I've had already, like to, mm -hmm. to make something like Icebreaker or choosing and people buy it, you know what I'm saying? It's not like, and this ain't no shade to nobody that be making like oils and butter and like mm -hmm. they get their clothes wholesale and then they resell them and stuff or whatever, or hair or something like this is something that didn't exist. I created it from the idea stage, made it into a practical physical product and sold it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it feels good, man. Like I said, it reestablishes any thought processes, any beliefs that I had in myself. And uh, it's cool to see people engaging with something like that. It's almost like having a kid, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you're very proud of what you create. So they can do the slightest thing. When you know they get up and walk, you go, hey, look at this. Like they're walking, you know what I'm saying? Because like, <laughs> you made that, you know? So it's kind of the same thing, it has the same effect. And like, as for the music, um, uh, it's very cool, man, especially with performing, you know, uh, getting to see people actually like, hey, this is this is actually good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> you, hear, you hear a lot of music and you be like, eh, that ain't, that ain't it. And, and not every one of my songs is, is, a, is a banger, you know what I'm saying? It ain't gonna hit, but it's like to see people in real time actually gravitate to see streams coming from uh, across the world, hopefully galaxy one day, like it's, it's cool, you know what I'm saying? It's just, like I said, reestablishing, reconfirming the, the thought processes that I've had already, like, yo, this is, this is dope. And right. for them to reciprocate that is, is amazing. Facts, man. Let me give you your flowers and a clap again, man, because like, that's, that's so cool, it, man. man. <laughs> For real. And it's funny you say, you know, maybe throughout the galaxy, because, you know, I, I I got, um you know, I'm on Spotify and all these other platforms and stuff, and I look to see, like, you know, where is it? And it does, like, surprise me every time I see someone from, like, the Philippines, Singapore, uh, Canada, you know, all these different places in the, in the States. And I did see, though, where it was like, you know, which planet is listening? And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. What you mean? You know, it is like, 
Earth is one <laughs> percent. For real, I'm like, I hope it's one hundred percent. What you mean? Guys? You got Mars listening for real, like <laughs> we're tuning on Mars and Jupiter. Like. <laughs> I was like Spotify, they wrong for that, but I understand why they did it. It's it definitely yeah. keep people talking, man. I had so much, <laughs> so much fun this interview, Mark. Man, I appreciate you just opening up about yeah, everything, man. man. From your from your educational journey to creating Icebreaker, choosing to your music career, man, and future projects that you got coming out. I'm so excited with all that stuff have like going on in your life. Like, what do you like to do on your downtime to you know just unwind? I know you said something about you as a gamer, right? Or still, oh, yeah, yeah, man. definitely, man. I got the Xbox One, so I'm an Xbox player. Uh, oh, oh, me too, man. I gotta add you, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, see, my name is simple it's capital P, zero, capital L, capital O. It's Polo. Uh, okay. yeah, and the reason why I Polo because uh, back when I was young and when I was living in Atlanta, uh, my best friend's father used to call me Marco. Uh, so you already know Marco Polo, Polo yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, yeah. So I play video games. I play Battlefield. That's my favorite franchise. Battlefield 2042, Xbox One. Uh, Xbox uh, uh, One X, my bad. Xbox One X. Gotcha, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, who, you know, I'm actually about to go work out after okay. this. Um, I like to do that. I like to go out and dance and stuff. Um, there's other random things. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a spontaneous and adventurous dude, too. So if I'm not... You know, I don't really think about things like, oh, I got to plan it out. It's just like, oh, let me go out and get some food. Or let me just go to this little small bar. Or, Thanks. oh, snap, there's a theme park over there. Let's just go. You know, so uh, I do a <laughs> bunch of spontaneous I things. But, um, yeah, that's mainly it. Gaming, hooping, working out, and then adventure time, if you will. Man, I feel, I feel like we're like the same person. Like, I love hoop, but I can't hoop. <laughs> like, I ain't gonna lie. But everything else, you know, going like spontaneous, going out and doing like I'm the same way. Like, yeah, uh, you're real for saying that, though. It's, it's some yeah. people that think they can well, hoop. I was a football nah. guy. Like, I was not nah, hooping. It was just not. I don't know why. Like it skipped me. It went to my brother, but like it skipped me, man. I can't it, just just the thought of a crossover was just like, how do you yeah. keep the <laughs> you, you can talk about it though? Man, you know, yeah. Yeah, you can like, talk about I it. I don't BS. Like I'm 100 real. I, I'm not a I'm not a hooper, but I appreciate the game, and I will. Yeah, here I'm engaged. I'm. You know, I watch it, but yeah, I I cannot play it. I'm always picked last. Damn near like they'll pick someone who's. <laughs> You know, really messed up or disabled before they picked me to be on the court, and it was rough, oh, especially especially in elementary and middle school. They were like, "Ah, shit! I guess we're gonna pick Alvin. We need a fifth man." Yeah, <laughs> yeah you you to make ten. I get you. Yep, man. yep that's all. <laughs> get rebounds and pass it to me, Al. That's well. That's that was it. Yeah, <laughs> and I was having so much fun talk with you, bro. Like this this is a really good interview, man. I can't wait for all my peeps to see this and share this. And I just got a few more questions I love to ask yeah. that are like staple questions. So one of them is quotes. Like I'm a big quote guy. Like I got them tatted. I keep them on my wall. I used to have a sign here, but it fell <laughs> in my last interview. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to keep it down. But uh, what is your favorite quote or saying that you lean on during the good times or the bad times? Um, one I've always liked is the be the change you wish to see. In, be the change you wish to see in the world. Um, that's why I don't just come up with an idea. I try to be practical about it, try to apply it. You know, that's why when I meet people and then I socialize with them and we say the things like the let's work or let's get together and collab, I actually reach out right then and there. I don't try to waste time because I feel like that's the issue with the world. The, the world wants to waste time. Everyone thinks that they got so much crazy things going on and they don't realize it's it's possibly a million other people going through the same stuff you're going through, you know what I'm saying? Doing the same stuff and still overcoming. So why are you wasting time? You know what I'm saying? What, what's the whole point? Don't you really, don't you want to be free, financially free? You know what I'm saying? Don't you want to yeah. <laughs> live in a better place? Don't you want to have these connections that you see on TV? Why are you wasting time? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I feel like if I, I want to be that change that I, I wish to see, I don't want to waste people's time. I want to get right. Let's get right to it. While we got the health to do it. You know what I'm saying? While we got the wealth to do it, while we got the idea going, let's do it now. So uh, be the change you wish to see in the world. Man, that is powerful, man, for real. Yeah. Like, man, all my peeps, you make sure you guys share that to someone who needs to hear that because I mean, I've heard people say, 
And I know we're going to sidetrack, but I just heard a lot of people say before, you know, like why they didn't make it or why they, you know, they're not pursuing their dreams and they want to always, you know, blame it on stuff that they've, they went through in life and don't get me wrong. There's some, some horrible, sad, gut wrenching stories, but I know some that, or heard of some that went through that same thing mm-hmm. and they didn't stop them, you know? And it's like, you just got to have that, oomph, that fire, that desire, like I said, that financial freedom that you want, you know, like when you said, that, I said, mm, I felt that right there, you know, yeah. like, you know, who wants to struggle for the rest of their life, you know, or who wants to, Nobody. you know, like I'll, my biggest fear is literally like, I think I heard David Goggins say this before, but it's literally like dying or beyond my deathbed and seeing all these different things, me like in a, a, a fireman's like suit or me, you know, find a cure for cancer or win these awards or just all these different things. And, you know, God is like, you know, this is what I expected you to do. But you did none of these things. And it was a bunch of different things. Like the way I'm probably paraphrasing that, but yeah. the way he was saying it, and I, I really don't want that to be me. I'm like, no, I really don't want that. Like, I got one life to live. I've lost friends at an early age in life to gun violence, to mm-hmm. you know, just suicide, a lot of different things. And I'm like, life is short. It's it's borrowed time. I gotta yeah. do what I love, man, because life changes so fast. Like you could be on top one one month feeling good you hit the shot then one month yeah. later you down at the bottom borrowing money yeah. and stuff you know or you know barely getting through you know it's it's crazy how life is so i'm always a big big believer and supporter of anyone who's going for their dreams just become go-getters and i mean shit you are you're a goal-getter and a go-getter you know so yeah. like i said give me your flowers for that man <laughs> you. you're welcome really uh just a couple more uh just um another thing i'm really big on is gratitude like that keeps me just grounded because no matter if i've had you know thousands of streams on one episode or you know in your case millions you know or anything like that you know i'll always love to just think of you know the things that keep me grounded keep me rooted and what i'm really grateful for so what are three things that you're grateful for in your life currently and if it's more uh, than three, that's fine too. <laughs> I like to oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, such a good number. <laughs> yeah, easy, man. Uh, family, uh, close friends, and uh, I'm gonna say friends and loved ones. And um, shit, I, I'm gonna say God, cause but see, I, I see God with all of those things. So you know, what I'm saying it's kind of cheating to say God, cause it's like you supposed to have God in everything, anyways. Yeah, amen to but, that. Um, but I'm gonna say family, friends, and uh, honestly, man, um, me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if, I say, if I can't say God, I gotta say me, just because, um, like I said, well, I'm gonna start with the family. The family, it's cause like they, 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 they taught me the ways. You know what I'm saying? They gave me the discipline. They gave me the know-how, the knowledge, the experiences that I apply to this very day. Um, including, you know, what I'm saying I include my girl. She's like into the family part also more so than the friends part um the discipline you know the the compromise the sacrifices the things that i've had to make and still push myself forward Um, i'm very gracious in it i have a lot of gratitude for those things um so that's number one number two uh the friends you know i tell people all the time you know when when you see these news articles of these kids or whatever doing these wild things these these young adults doing these wild things. I, they always want to blame like the parents and stuff. I'm like, nah, bro. If you really, you know, don't forget when you was a kid, you was more influenced by your friends than your parents. You know what I'm saying? So 100%. they quick to blame the, the parents. And I'm like, nah, bro, you gotta, if, if that dude do something whack, blame his homies, bro. You know what I'm saying? Not not just blame his homies. You gotta blame the person too. You gotta have some. Of course. Time. But it's like, his homies should have told him, nah, bro, that that ain't it. That's not what you do. You know what I'm saying? Her mm-hmm. homegirl should have said something like, hey, maybe you should. You know what I'm saying? So it's mm-hmm. like, I, I'm really, I have a lot of gratitude for my friends for keeping me in check when necessary. You know what I'm saying? I can be a very strong-minded person, a very, as you see, go-getter, hungry, all that. And it's, sometimes it's hard to deter somebody like myself. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate them for the efforts that they do in including me in things, you know what I'm saying? Inviting me to this party, inviting me out to go play basketball, um, just letting me know of opportunities, whether it's someone like LF3 telling me about the People's Choice podcast or, um, and I just met LF3, you know, over the over the last year, or whether it's 
old school homie that's just like, hey man, me and some people, we going on this this cruise or we going to this this um this city or something. Like you you available, just even inviting me. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm very, I'm very thankful for that and just them keep me in check, making sure that I ain't doing nothing stupid. It's not that I do things stupid. It's just, you know, in yeah, case I do I do or I'm thinking about something wrong, they'll tell me. Right. I appreciate that. That's um, so true. That reminds me of a quote where uh, I heard actually it's another guy named Mark <laughs> Mark Miro. <laughs> he uh, he told me this. I don't know if he started, but he, he told me this before when he was like, you know, you show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So yeah, like, that, yeah. yeah, like so. When you saying that, I was like, that just brought back to that man. That's so true, bro. Yeah, man. And uh, lastly, it's just myself, bro, for for staying hungry, for using that animosity, that tension, that anger, and using it to produce things. Uh, to be able to overcome, no matter how stressed, sick, overwhelmed, uh, happy, sad, whatever I am, I'm still able. I have that discipline now in place to where I can still operate and do the things that I need to do and have that vision, even when those circumstances are happening. You know, I don't need certain conditions. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I I thank me for just constantly trying to strive to be better, man, because we give up on ourselves all the time, you know? And uh, fortunately, I haven't had down periods for too long. You know, my down periods may be a couple hours sometimes, maybe a day, maybe two days, but it's not no week, month, and even if it was, which it's never been, you would never know because I'm still putting in work. <laughs> you know, like I'll still be writing, I'll still be recording, I'll still be making games, I'm still going to events, I'm still helping others and being kind and stuff. Like, I thank me for doing that because that's put me in positions that have given me opportunities, whether it's just helping somebody move or something and because they listen to my music because I told them I help them move, now they're telling my my story to someone else who can put me in a position to do things so it's okay. like opening up opportunities by just being a human mm-hmm. and by staying with it you know so that's it man family friends and myself bro shout out to god too because he always up there so 100 100 thank you so much mark may for you know opening up and talking about your your life and career so far and you've got support from People's Choice Podcast, myself, for, for life, man. Thank you for being part of the People's Choice family. Uh, just one last question before we wrap up. Um, where can all my peeps and new audience find you on social media? And I'm make sure I'll put all the links in the video and description. And um, one last message that you love to give to all my uh, peeps and new fans and your fans, too, that's seeing this. Okay. Uh, so, as you see, Mark May on the shirt. You can follow me everywhere. Um Got some Actually, nice merch, by the way, too. I'm going to say that. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. And all of those are designs that I made for my from my cover arts. So if you see all those things, yeah, yeah. Go, go to the website, which is what I'm about to give you now. So it's www.markmade.com. There is no period in between Mark Made for the you know the web address. So it's just www.markmade.com, and you can find Icebreaker, Choosing, all the music all my videos, all on the webpage. Uh, if you're looking for my Instagram handle or Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora Radio, I'm also on there. That's dope. But yeah, like, it's dope. <laughs> I'm trying oh, to get on Pandora. <laughs> That's dope. <Yeah. laughs> I actually rock with my Pandora station more than my Spotify, simply because like they actually, they actually pair me up with artists that I sound similar to, like the yeah. Russes, and the Kendrick Lamars, and the J. Yeah. Coles, and Mac Millers. Like it's yeah. cool to hear. My song, and then you'll hear Kendrick, and then you'll hear Drake, and then you'll hear Mac Miller, and then it come back to me, then it'll go J. Cole and Russ. It, all all my feeling. favorites. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a good feeling. So um, you can find me anywhere on social media at Mark Made. Uh, you can get any merch, any music, see any videos, get any products like Icebreaker Choosing at the webpage. And uh, yeah, man, that's it. Yay, yay. Yay. <laughs> Mark <laughs> Made, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again, Mark, for being a part of the show. And I cannot wait to see what the future holds for you, man. I can't wait for all these projects. Yeah, yeah it's going to be. I can't wait for that either. You know, I'm bumping the whole thing. It's going to be fine, man. But I appreciate you for having me uh, on the People's Choice podcast, man. It's definitely been a blessing. Shout out to LS3 for even putting my name into 
Thank you know you. what I'm saying? Just here to make you want to reach out and everything. So uh, shout out to LF3. I know he putting in some work right now. On that oh, industry. man. He's, uh, and it's going to be fine. He's just, okay. he's just killing it, man. man I, <laughs> <laughs> such a good man, <laughs> man. Such a good dude. <laughs> and such yeah, a hard worker. It is. All right. You have a great one, brother. And I hope you have a great workout. Is it leg day today? Uh no nah, man, it's, I I do full body every every time, bro. That's just, what I'm talking about. That's the way up, to do man. it. <laughs> yeah, I ain't trying to be built down low in this. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta put a funny picture in there for that. <laughs> <laughs> you have a good one, brother. Alrighty, man. All, All right. right, all right, brother.